In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can train an image classification model that you can use on an iOS device with CoreML natively. So, let's get to it. Alright, so I've gone ahead and created a new root, root folder here cor called CoreML TUT, CoreML Tutorial, and in here I just have a folder called Data. Now this Data folder contains two other folders called Apple and Avocado. And this data has been taken from the Fruits 360 dataset off of Kaggle. Um, you can go there, download it, and keep one of the Apple classes and one of the Avocado classes. There are sub-Apple classes. Pick one that you want. And that is the use of our data. I'll link the data set down in the description from the Kaggle link. So before we write code, I'm just going to quickly see if these data sets are even numerically. So Apple, we got 492. That looks good. And Avocado, we got 427. So that's even enough. We're going to leave it there. And now let's go create one new file first called coco.name. This file is just needed for quick AI to init. It, you leave it blank. After that we have train.py and in this file we're going to start with our import statement which is going to be from quick AI import image classification and then we're going to be calling that class image classification for this video, I'm going to go with the VGG16 architecture. You can play around with what suits your data best. Dot slash data. That's the path to our data. And then save name. I'm going to call this fruits. I'm going to, yeah, fruits. And then we're going to set save iOS equals true. This parameter will save our model as an iOS model as well. Um, so that's that. We're going to go ahead and run this quickly. Just, I'm going to make sure that my Python interpreter is set. And now I'm going to go ahead and run this. So this is running. Just spitting out some warnings. That's all good. Yeah, I'm going to full screen this. And it started training, and the default training in Quick AI is 20 epochs, so it will go ahead and train for 20 epochs. I'm going to pause the recording to make the training go faster, and also because it takes a long time to train. Alright, so, so we're back now, and the training is at the last epoch. It is wrapping up, and the training is done. You can see our training graph. And now it's going to go ahead and save that model in CoreML format. To do this, it will use CoreML tools, so you will need CoreML tools installed. That is very easy to install. It's a simple pip install. Um, it's saved our model with the .ml model extension, along with our standard TensorFlow model. Now, since we are going to be using this on iOS, I have to switch over to my Mac, so I will see you when I am there. Alright, so now I am back at my Mac, and here I have the .ml model file that we trained earlier. I'm just going to rename this with a capital F. Like that. I'm going to rename this to a capital F because that is the convention. So now, here I just want to, we just want to prove that this model works, so we're just going to use a sample Apple I, um, sample Apple Core ML app. So we are going to come over here and um, type in Apple Core ML image classification demo. It will be this first link here. It will say classifying images with vision and Core ML. Hit download. Downloads a zip. Let's come over here and you can open that project in Xcode. All right, so I've gone ahead and opened that project in Xcode, and as you can see, it looks pretty typical. So the first step that we have to do to use our custom model is to add our custom model to the project. So come over here to Finder, grab your model, get it on the drag, 
bring it to Xcode, drop it, and make sure copy items if needed is checked and make sure the primary target there is checked, hit finish. That will then bring in that model file to the Xcode project. And in a couple seconds, it should show up here. That's weird. Let's try it again. It should show up there. But while we're waiting for that, open up image classification, view controller, and here on line 30, it's going to say mobile net. Change that to fruits, like that. Again, I don't know why. There we go. It just showed up. It showed up twice there. Just delete one. And make sure to hit remove reference when you do that. Here we go. This is that. So it is a bit slow on the indexing because I am also running OBS. But now that we have done that, you will see this pop-up come up that says Fruits is only available on iOS 13 or newer. And to fix that, we have to come over to our project in general in the target and change this from iOS 11 to iOS 13. Once we change that, this pop-up will eventually go away. And now we can go ahead and run this app. Now, since I am on a M1 Mac, I cannot run it in the simulator because there is a bug on an M1 Mac. If you run this in the simulator at the time of recording, you will get an Expresso error. Exp no, Expresso content cannot be loaded. If you're on an Intel Mac, you should be fine. But I'm going to go ahead and run this on my phone, and I will include a screen cap of the app running in the video. So as you can see, the app works as intended. It is able to classify the fruit correctly in a very, very short amount of time. So yeah, that's been it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please smash that like button and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll see you in the next video.